and welcome to our channel Cognibot. So in previous videos we have already discussed about robots, then what is robotics, what are the laws of robotics and history of robotics and also introduction to electricity. In which we have discussed the different terminologies that is used under electricity. So one of them is motors. So today's feed, in today's video we are going to discuss about motors. What are motors and what are the different types of motors. So motors are one of the primary mechanisms by which robots move. Now what is a motor? So an electric motor is an electrical machine which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So the types of electric motors are available in three main segments like AC motor, DC motor and special purpose motors. So in this video we will be discussing about AC motor, their construction, classification and their application. So uh, let's start with AC motor and AC motor is a motor that converts the alternating current into mechanical power and the stator and the rotor are important parts of AC motors. So the stator is the stationary part of the motor and the rotor is the rotating part of the motor and the AC motor can be either single phase or three phase. Nikola Tesla invented the first AC induction motor in 1887. Now let's start with construction of an AC motor. How it is constructed? Alternating current drives AC motor. So the stationary stator and the rotating rotor are the important parts of the AC motors. In this section let us study the different parts of an AC motor. So first of all uh, let's start with stator. So the stator is a stationary part of the motor that uh, delivers a rotating magnetic field to interact with the rotor. Then stator core. So the stator core is made of thin metal sheets which are known as laminations. So laminations are used to reduce energy loss. Next is stator windings. So stator windings are stacked together forming a hollow cylinder. The slots of the stator core uh, coils of insulated wires are insulated. So when the assembled motor is in operation, the stator windings are connected to a power source. Each group of coils along with the steel core becomes an electromagnet when the current is applied. Then there is rotor. So a rotor is a central component of a motor that is fixed to the shaft. The most common type of rotor used in an AC motor is the squirrel cage rotor. A squirrel cage rotor is cylindrical and is met by stacking thin steel laminations. Instead of inserting coils of wire between the slots, conductor bars are die cast into the evenly spaced slots around the cylinder. Once the conductor bars are die casted, they are electrically and mechanically connected to the end rings. Then motor shaft. So the rotor is pressed onto a steel shaft to form a rotor assembly. The shaft extends outside the motor casing allowing a connection to an external system to transmit the rotational power. The next is bearings. So bearings hold the motor shaft in place and the bearings minimize the shaft's friction connected to the casing which increase the motor's efficiency. So the enclosure protects the internal parts of the motor from water and the other environmental elements. The enclosure consists of a frame and two end brackets. So the motor that runs at synchronous speed is known as the synchronous motor and the constant speed at which the motor generates the electromotive force is known as synchronous speed. An electromagnet in the rotating uh, magnetic field magnetically locks itself with the rotating magnetic field and ro uh, rotates simultaneously as the rotating field. So this is where the name synchronous motor arrives from. This also means that synchronous motors have fixed speeds. Now what is the working principle of synchronous motor? The synchronous motor works with two electrical inputs provided to it. The stator is equipped with a three-phase AC supply while the rotor is provided with DC supply. 
So the statin winding supplied with three phase AC supply generates three phase rotating magnetic flux and the rotor carrying DC supply produces a constant flux. So at a particular instant the rotor and the stator poles might be of the same polarity means north to north and south to south causing a repulsive force and at the very next second it will be north south uh, causing an attractive force. So due to this attractive and repulsive force the motor cannot rotate in any direction and remains in a standstill position. To overcome this resistance to motion, the rotor is initially fed mechanical input that rotates it in the same direction as the magnetic field. So after some time, magnetic locking occurs and the synchronous motor rotates in synchronism. Now next is induction motor. So induction motors are the most commonly used motors and they are also known as asynchronous motors because they are uh, always run slower than the synchronous speed. So based on the type of rotor construction they are divided into two types as follows like squirrel cage motor and slip ring motor. So let's start with the working principle of induction motors. So how does induction motor works? In an induction motor the stator winding is fed with an AC supply this causes the stator winding to develop an alternating flux. We call this uh, rotating flux, rotating magnetic field that is RMF. So according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the relative speed between the stator RMF and the rotor RMF causes an induced EMF in the rotor conductors. So rotor conductors are short circuited and the rotor current is produced due to induced EMF. This induced current produces alternating flux around it. It should be noted that the stator flux lags behind the rotor flux. So due to the relative velocity between the rotating stator flux and the rotor, the rotor rotates in the same direction as that of stator flux to minimize the relative velocity. This is the basic working principle of the induction motor. So let's start with the applications of AC motors. So AC motors are a preferred source of supply due to the following reasons. First of all, it is longevity. With only a few moving parts, AC motors have the potential to last for years. And the durability of AC motors makes them a preferred solution for field applications such as agricultural equipment and commercial applications such as vending machines. Now, efficiency. So the speed to torque characteristics of AC motors allow them to provide excellent performance in many applications without overheating, degeneration or breaking. So this is why an AC motor is chosen for high demand applications such as pumps and packaging equipment. Now next is quiet operation. So producing less noise AC motors are ideal for applications in stores hospitals and restaurants. Then it's about availability. So AC motors are available in a wide range of sizes and power outputs. So this wide range makes it ideal for many applications. So in today's video we have discussed about AC motor and in next video we are going to discuss about DC motor. So if you like this video, so please like, subscribe and share.